Hi guys, Kotyutar here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In the previous video, you got introduced to Retrofit and you saw that you defined an interface called as API interface and in that you used the annotation called POST to define a API for author registration. Well, this is just one of the POST requests that our application has. Other than that, we have few more POST APIs like login author and logout author. And for that also, you have to provide URL endpoint using POST annotation and also the body. Other than that, we have uh, another API which is also a POST request that is add to do item. Most of this looks pretty similar except we use an annotation at header and then we pass method argument token which is of type string. Now you might be wondering what is this? Well to understand this let's recall how our add to item HTTP request looks like in a postman. If you observe we are sending a token string value as a part of the header in this post request. So header annotation that you see here in the retro Profit code corresponds to the header string that we are passing as a part of post request. So we have covered most of the post requests. Other than that, we have a get request which is get all to do items from backend. And once again, we are using a header to send the token. But other than that, there is something slightly different in this case as well. As a part of add get annotation, the URL includes a string called as author email ID, and that author email ID is also defined as part of method argument string author email id once again if you go back to the postman the url actually contains email id so that is why to accommodate for this particular email id we are using flower brackets author email id and whatever the author email id string variable that you declare as a part of the url should match with add path value string author email id that you will be passing if you are wondering the author email id java variable need to match with the annotation value author email id not necessarily but i just prefer writing this way so that it becomes easy to keep track of the variables in the code other than get we have a put request which is used to modify the existing to do item once again we use a header and a body here and if at all you want to delete to do item you use add delete annotation but however you will observe that in this case we have not used add delete annotation instead of that we have used at http and then following it up with some other information i'm sure you would be wondering can't i just use a at delete annotation well you can use but if you use at delete annotation the delete request should not have body what do i mean by that is if you recall the postman collection for the delete api we are sending a payload as a part of the delete request typically delete requests don't have body but however right now we are stuck with a situation where we need to send payload as a part of the delete request and at delete annotation doesn't allow us to do that and that is where we customize our delete request using at http annotation we tell what kind of method it is in this case it is delete and then what is the path that we need to use for this particular api and then finally we need to tell whether this particular request has a body or not so has body equals to true will make sure that this api actually takes a payload and with this we are pretty much done in defining all the api that we have in our application. This looks good enough but however let's have a look at how our existing retrofit code looks like. You basically have the first chunk where you use the HTTP login interceptor initialization and then you initialize the OK HTTP client then you initialize the retrofit you initialize the web service interface instance and finally make the call. There are few things which can be grouped together. The first three parts can be part of one class another chunk of code which is actually making the web service callback can be part of another class or uh, another logic so it is all about 
how do we make our code little bit more concise and refactor our code so that our code becomes much more easy to manage well to do that we will be defining another class called as api service provider whatever the ok http client retrofit logging interceptor everything will be defined here and this will also have a api interface instance which will be used by the other classes to actually make the call if you don't understand it through uml we will definitely have a look at the code to understand how the refactored code looks like so let's get into a demo so this is the old code base and this is how our login logic looks like as of now so let me change the github branch i have a retrofit refactored this is the modified code so this is where we have defined all the api requests that our application needs and if you have a look at the register dialog fragment and come to the login method you will observe that the number of lines of code that we had written earlier has completely gone all that we are doing is app config get api service provider and then we are invoking get register author api which actually returns me a call author object so this part of the code is still the old code but this is something new that you might be looking at well app config is nothing but a class which extends application and then get api service provider is a static method which returns me a api service provider now what is api service provider this is a another class this is where we have defined our ok http client retrofit http logging interceptor and api interface it has a private constructor and a public static method called as get api service provider so basically this class will be a singleton class and then it has got many public methods like get register author api login author logout author basically corresponding to different api calls that we would like to do from our application it is this get register author api that we are invoking in our register dialog fragment so our overall code becomes much more concise you will observe that in the same way if you go to the home activity which corresponds to the activity that you will see after logging in once again we are using app config get api service provider and then we are just invoking add to do item which is defined here in the api API service provider in the same way you have remove to do and to do a remove operation we are invoking delete to do operation from the api service provider and then modify to do once again we are invoking modify to do item from the api service provider and get to do items is done through get to do list method from the api service provider so you can just understand how our overall code becomes very concise so the best way to understand this is debug the application i will put some breakpoints here and in the same way here in the main activity we have a login functionality and what we are doing in the login functionality is once we get the response after successfully logging in which is we basically get the token value we store that particular token value in the shared preference so that we will be using that particular token value again and again in the api service provider to send that token as a part of http request so let me run the application and enable the debug mode and let me enter the password click on the login as you can see here we got the response response contains the token value we'll go to the next activity and in the next activity we are getting the response which basically contains all the get to do's and right now it looks like i have only one item in the back end so that is id 27 adding from office from home so that is what you will observe in the ui and and then if i want to add another item so the response is this it is 55 make a video from home this is the response that i got and i will be updating the ui so the ui got updated and in the same way if i want to delete i will enter the id 55 and then remove the response that i got was nothing because delete response doesn't contain any payload however if you do check the code it is a 204 that means it successfully deleted the value from the backend so if you want to be a little bit more precise you can check for that particular code that whether it was 204 and then if it is 204 
before you can actually remove that particular item from the to do items which is a list so i can just go ahead and remove the item and if at all i want to modify i have to provide the id just say update the social media modify and once again i got the response response is the modified value and i update the ui and you can see that the ui got updated so this is how our refactored code with the retrofit looks much better and efficient in our application so that's it about the retrofit so stay tuned for the next video where i will be talking about uh, another very popular library called as wally to do the api integration that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye